In November of 1970, the Oregon Department of Transportation blew up this dead whale using 20 cases of dynamite. They were hoping that the whale would explode into chunks small enough for seagulls to eat, but that did not happen. In fact, as you can see, pretty much the opposite happened. One chunk destroyed a car a quarter of a mile away, and this substantial piece of the whale basically didn't move at all. What went wrong? The engineer responsible for planning the blast used the wrong amount of dynamite. 20 cases of dynamite blew the whale into chunks too big for birds to eat, but small enough to fly all over the place and hit cars and people. If he had wanted to explode the whale into a few large chunks that could be bulldozed away, he should have used far less dynamite, say 20 sticks instead of 20 cases. If he had wanted to completely vaporize the whale, he should have spread the 20 cases of dynamite out throughout the carcass instead of concentrating it in one area. And there are other factors to consider, like the difference between how bones react to explosions versus soft tissue. The art of blowing stuff up, it turns out, is harder than it looks. <laughs> but we've gotten a lot better at it over the years, despite the odd mishap. In fact, we've gotten so good at it that we can now use explosives to do this. This doesn't even really look like an explosion. It just looks like the building kind of turns into a liquid and splashes down to earth. This is called explosive demolition. And to understand how we do it today, you have to understand how we used to do it 350 years ago. Let's set the scene. The year is 1666. The Great London Fire has been raging for two days and people are desperate for a quick way to create a fire break, a space between houses that the fire can't cross. Enter gunpowder, specifically black powder. Black powder is a mixture of three chemicals, potassium nitrate, charcoal, which is basically carbon, and sulfur, which, when it's struck or heated, react to form a couple salts, lots of carbon dioxide and nitrogen gases, and lots of energy. The gases expand, and boom, you have an explosion. People would literally plop a barrel of black powder on the ground floor, set a fuse, and blow the joint. The house would pop a meter off the ground, come back down, and the force of its landing would splinter the wooden frame and reduce it to rubble in a matter of seconds, creating the fire break that they needed. Then, more than a hundred years later, in what is now Waterford, Ireland, demolitionists brought down the Holy Trinity Cathedral using 150 pounds of black powder. Funny story, the internet is a bit split on whether it's 150 pounds of black powder or 150 British pounds sterling worth of black powder. Either way, 150 pounds of black powder is actually not the best way to bring down any large building, especially if you want to do it artfully, like this. The cathedral demolition, on the other hand, probably would have looked something like this. What explains the difference? Présence! My mustache coming off. Uh... Brisance is actually a word that comes from the French briser, which means to break or shatter. A high brisance explosive will shatter something into millions of pieces, whereas a low brisance explosive will break into a few large pieces. Black powder is a low brisance explosive, which is okay when you're trying to take down a small house built of wood in 1666, but not okay when you're trying to bring down a massive stone cathedral. So if you're trying to do this, you can't use black powder. You need a highly, highly brisant explosive. Why? Well, let's look at a concrete column on the ground floor of a typical concrete building. It's supporting the weight of all the floors above it. And you wanna bring all those floors down in as straight a line as possible. So if you could, you would make this column magically disappear instantly. You can't, but the next best thing would be to shatter it into as many pieces as possible. And in 1866, Alfred Nobel, yes, that Nobel, made that shattering possible with the first major advance in explosive technology since the Chinese invented black powder in the ninth century, dynamite. To see why dynamite is so different and so much more brisant than black powder, let's look at what it is and how it works. In Nobel's dynamite, the explosive compound is a single chemical nitroglycerin. Here's its chemical structure. With black powder, two or three chemicals need to come together for the reaction to happen, and that takes time. Whereas with nitroglycerin, all the atoms are right there in the same molecule, so the reaction is much faster. This, by the way, is a general rule in chemistry. Reactions that take place within the same molecule, especially if it's a small one, are generally faster than reactions that happen between two or more molecules. How much faster? 
Let's look at what happens when a stick of dynamite explodes. First, the blasting cap explodes. This is a relatively small explosion at one end of the stick of dynamite. That small explosion generates a shock wave, which compresses the surrounding nitroglycerin enough that it heats up and starts to react, which generates more heat along with gases that start to expand. This pushes the shock wave to the next little section of the stick of dynamite. This keeps happening, so what you end up with is a convex-shaped shock wave and reaction front that travel from the blasting cap to the other end of the stick, leaving the reaction products in their wake. Temperatures in the reaction front can get up to 2700 degrees Celsius, and pressure can get up to 300 times atmospheric pressure. The shock wave travels through the stick of dynamite at more than 7 kilometers per second. This is about 10 times faster than black powder, and it's also faster than the speed of sound in dynamite. When a shock wave travels through the material faster than the speed of sound would, that's detonation. When it travels slower, that's deflagration. Black powder usually deflagrates. Dynamite detonates. Detonation is much, much more destructive. The other major difference between black powder and dynamite is how much energy they release. Black powder releases about 3,000 kilojoules per kilogram. Dynamite releases twice that. Oh, and dynamite also releases three times the volume of gas per kilogram as black powder. One stick of dynamite produces 70-ish two-liter bottles worth of gas at standard temperature and pressure. So, dynamite releases three times as much gas and twice as much energy in one-tenth of the time as black powder. These differences in the reactions make a huge difference in how each explosive behaves. Black powder is low brisance. Dynamite is high brisance. So, for example, you would never put dynamite in a gun barrel to try and propel a bullet, but if you're trying to completely shatter, destroy, even pulverize a material, then high brisance is exactly what you're looking for. And that brings us back to this. Let's say you wanted to take down this eight-story building with concrete column supports, which is right next to a couple other buildings. So you want to make absolutely sure the building implodes, falling inwards and not outwards. What you absolutely cannot do is just pile a bunch of explosives in the center of the ground floor because that would send concrete chunks flying right into nearby buildings. What you need to do is use as little dynamite as possible and place it strategically. Here, 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 and here, in holes drilled directly into the concrete columns. Then you detonate everything, but not exactly at the same time. You start with this column. Then, maybe 25 milliseconds later, you blow these columns. Then, 25 milliseconds later, these. Then these, and you keep going until you've blown them all. Because you started in the middle, and because you're blowing the columns sequentially, the building collapses inwards. You're basically pulverizing the building's essential support structures so that gravity can gently pull it all down. If everything goes right, the whole thing comes down in a matter of seconds, and the nearby buildings are spared. A little dusty, sure, but spared. These days, buildings are a lot taller than they used to be, partially because we switched to steel cores for high-rise buildings. That presents a little bit of a problem if you want to take them down, because steel is a lot more difficult to shatter than concrete. So you need an explosive with even more brisance than dynamite. Enter. RDX, which is brisant enough to shatter steel. But you can't drill a hole in a steel support and throw a stick of RDX in there because steel supports are usually only 50-ish millimeters thick. So you have to use RDX's explosive energy to cut through the steel. And the way you do that is with linear-shaped charges. A linear-shaped charge is kind of a V-shaped metal cylinder full of explosive. You put the open part of the V against the thing you want to cut, and when the explosive detonates, it pushes the metal outwards, forming what's essentially an explosively propelled knife that slices right through the steel. Which, by the way, ideally, you have scored or cut beforehand to weaken it. That helps to bring the building down. Ironically, a lot of engineering and chemistry goes into these five seconds. 